Hello everyone, welcome back to Long's Takes. Today, uh, I'm gonna try to do something a little bit different today, and I'm gonna be reacting to Thor versus Vegeta Death Battle. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Death Battle. Uh, I've been watching it since even before Goku vs. Superman. Um, and I haven't actually watched this one, even though it came out a little bit ago. Uh, and I just wanna see uh, what their takes on our, uh, on uh, Dragon Ball scaling and Vegeta scaling. Uh, and I want to see kind of how they think uh, maybe Ultra Ego works if they go that route uh, and how maybe they treat the manga and anime canonicity, uh, what they do there. Um, I'm very interested to see what they do. Uh, so let's get into it. Thor, the god of thunder. And Vegeta, the prince of all singing. The sky shakes when they appear, and the earth trembles when they approach. No world can contain the power of these two gods of... Okay, <laughs> okay so hopefully at least they say they're above planetary. That'd be really funny if they didn't. <laughs> or, or their egos. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Oh, okay, so before we get any further, uh, I'm going to predict right now uh, that probably Thor's going to win. Um, not to say that Death Battle has a trend, but usually the person uh, who tends to win is usually the, per the character who has some content related to them coming out. Um, so I know superheroes coming out, but Thor Love and Thunder came out like right around when this came out. So I would not be surprised um, if uh, Thor wins here. Um, but maybe I'll be wrong. Thunder cracks, the heavens rumble, lightning blinds your eyes. You look up to the sky and pray for mercy because Thor is angry. Well, you would have if you were a Viking. Nowadays, we don't have time for myths and legends. Oh, don't we? For in the modern mythology. Okay, so I'm Marvel actually going to skip this. Uh, I just want to see what they actually talk about, how strong he is. I don't really care about his character. Everyone knows who Thor is. Hero God of Strength. We're talking lifting a planet-sized serpent strong. Okay, so. Out a phoenix more strong. Arm wrestling with Hercules and almost throwing the earth out of orbit strong. Okay, so I, I love when Death Battle does this, though, when they take several feats and say them in a row uh, and kind of they choose not really to quantify one of them. So they just kind of name two, like, planetary-ish, maybe moon-level feats, depending on, like, how the actual kinetic energy would come out. I'm sure they're going to show the numbers for it. But then they say shit like how he beats the, the Phoenix Force. I don't know if they're going to explain this, but uh, if you do believe that Thor smacked around the Phoenix Force, that's like a multiversal feat, um, even, even maybe beyond, um, based on how the Phoenix Force scales. Um, it's few statements that it's like a multiversal constant and that it's like holding like reality together across like all of realities and shit. I don't know Marvel as well as I know... Um, uh dragon ball but um it's that's a very impressive feat but recently uh there was a storyline i don't know where that storyline went where like thor was the phoenix force's son and that's why uh the phoenix force like was bodied by his hammer because like it was literally like oh i'm not gonna fuck up my son some shit like that i could be totally wrong but uh, yeah notably he was once blasted with a graviton bomb which subjected him to the gravity of a neutron star okay that's over 200 billion times greater than earth's gravity okay and he's got the stamina to match they able to fight for 40 days and 40 nights without stopping and i mean uh yeah that's probably more impressive um than any stamina feat a dragon ball character has um there's stuff like with them training training in the hyperbolic time chamber but like they're not training that entire time. I think the most impressive stamina feat I can think of at the top of my head is when Goku trains for several days, not 40, more like a week straight at most. Um, when he's flying to Namek, it implies that like he never stopped um, training that entire time uh, without rest and stuff. Um, so I'd be, I'd stamina, you can't really quantify if how much their stamina has gotten like increased because, I mean, a lot of fights in Super actually insanely quick <laughs> i mean just look at the tournament power that it's like 47 minutes long or whatever so yeah uh, thor actually probably if they're gonna go off this probably actually has more stamina uh purely just um for in fighting than vegeta would and what better weapon for the god of storms to wield than a sentient cosmic storm eons ago the almighty god tempest rampaged through the universe 
It arrived in Asgard, and after a pitched battle, Odin managed to trap it within a block of the magic okay. thing ever. He can channel bolts of lightning, manipulate the weather, open portals to other dimensions, and absorb and redirect energy attacks. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that there's gonna be a point where they both absorb each other's attacks. Um, I'm gonna see how they justify that um, Ki is a type of energy uh, that Thor can absorb and redirect, because just saying redirect all energy is kind of vague, because, um, I mean, gamma radiation is a specific type of radiation here. Um, I don't know if he's ever shown absorbing, like, what, what Ki is is essentially... Um, the manifestation of life and like mental energies um that's like kind of harnessed by physical energies um at least that's kind of what seems to be explained by toriyama um with how it's courage right-mindedness and then vigor um so i want to see what uh that's probably good what, what's going to happen here or just suck it out of your body against your will like with this radiation dude the presence Okay, again, radiation, longer, not key. He's even used two Mjolnirs to absorb the power of the God Bomb, which would have killed every deity in existence across time and space. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Okay, so, I mean, that could be a justifiably universal feat um, if existence is pertaining to one universe. Um, if it's the idea that there is a deity at one po every single point in the universe. But from how that's implied, that doesn't seem to be saying that's going to, like, I don't know if it's literally just an explosion that'll do it, um, but it depends how close together the gods are, <laughs> which is kind of funny. But Mjolnir can transmute the elements, turn Thor invisible and intangible, let him travel through time, and even bring people back to life. Okay, uh, the, so the time travel feat is a little weird because um, I believe when he does that, he has like a stone that's attached to Mjolnir. I don't know if the scan right there actually said that or not. Um, let's see. Transmute the elements. Turn Thor invisible and intent. Um. Yeah. So yeah, the, he gets he gets a fragment of like something attached to his hammer, and that's actually what allows him to travel through time. So it's more of like a hacks thing that isn't on normal Milner. Um. But if you think somehow it, the thing was like some sort of mentally epic Thor or some shit, or like he can do this normally, um, then he does have a miserable speed. Um, again, I always want to base the scaling off of what the what death battle actually like presents here. Um, I don't know if they're about to give like an MFTL plus feed for Thor or some shit, and then just ignore this. Um, but when it comes to time travel feats, uh, you really have to see if it's actually just the movement speed to justify uh, measurable speed or not. Um, but if you say, oh, Thor has a measurable speed and that's the scale that they're going with, then Vegeta has no chance unless they somehow justify an immeasurable speed feat for Vegeta. That just does not exist. Um, but I, I am going to assume that they're not going to do that. Uh, but it's very weird that they're bringing it up, even though in the scan, they're saying, they're showing how it's not normal Milner that can do this. Let him travel through time and even bring people back to life. That shouldn't be relevant. To fly, all he has to do is take it for a spin. Literally, he throws that motherfucker as hard as he can and holds on for dear life. And when he does, it flies fast enough to cross the entire galaxy in seconds. Only one problem. It's a little teeny. Unlike Thor's big ass axe, Yarnbjorn. It's sharp enough to cut through celestial armor, and it's unbreakable. And, uh, and an axe. Okay, look, it doesn't have a galaxy storm inside it, but it's still pretty cool. Okay, oh, so. Shit, mm -hmm. look, Wiz. I'm pissed. Thor can harness his okay, here we go. godly power into one single ultimate attack. The God Blast. God is right. Even Galactus, the devourer of worlds, shit his pants and bounced at the sight of such an awesome attack. Jesus, even the Avengers seem pretty small potatoes compared to this guy. Why do so, again, would would have been cool if they actually, like, scaled Galactus's feats. Um, so, again, that's not much to go off of. I don't know if they're just going to come back later and say, oh, Galactus. They're just going to power scale Galactus at the end of the video, like, real quick. And just scale the God Blast to that. Um, but like justifiably that, that should be above, that should be a universal attack at least, uh, based on a few things Galactus has done. Um, again, not a Marvel expert, but I assume so. Even bother with them. Because not every problem can be solved by hitting it really hard. Well, shit. That was the point of Odin's lesson, to force his headstrong son to confront a world more complex and nuanced than his millennia of battle had prepared him for. 
Thor had to be more than a warrior, he had to be a hero. He's Venus, the Silver Surfer, and even the Sentry. So I actually do know for a fact that Silver Surfer does actually have an immeasurable speed feat. Um, there's just like a one random comic where he's just like, he takes like this chick back in time to like, like the Stone Age or some shit, but just by riding on his board. Um, and so really, if anyone can react to him flying on his board, and like this wasn't like a super like, amped up silver, silver surfer to my knowledge so uh if you want to argue that that is part of part of silver surfer's combat speed when he's traveling on his board and any character can react to that then that is a justifiable argument for immeasurable speed again when scaling cross verse fiction um there is really no like objectively correct answer compared to how it sometimes is in like inverse fiction um but yeah Sentry is strong enough to contend with the world breaker Hulk, a being strong enough to destroy the Marvel Universe over a hundred times over. In okay, so they're gonna use that really weird, like, sex scale that they used in Broly. Um, okay. Sure. Thor is 120 times universal. Okay. Fast enough to demolish Ares, the Greek god of war, who can fight within the span of flank time. That's like the tiniest amount of time that we can imagine. There are as many planks in a second as there are grains of sand on Earth. Oh, wait, did I say Earth? I meant 10 million billion billion Earths. Thor has tanked disintegration beams trying to tear apart his atoms one by one, survived Mephisto trying to consume his soul, and even withstood a temporal rift that aged normal people to dust. Oh, he's a hard best. Um, let's see. Shook the universe. Uh, shattered the roots of Yggdrasil, snapped a man adamantium, outsped a living planet across the solar system, kept fighting while impaled. Um, I don't know if any of those are, like, actually, like, super notable. The, which one did they just say? The disintegration beam thing. I mean, that's just a, that's just him taking a, tanking a hax that was weaker than his durability. That's not inherently impressive. That's just, like, that's, like, that's, like, saying how, like, Vegito like wasn't turned fully into candy by the candy beam I'm like yeah he was stronger than it <laughs> to kill and even nastier when he loses his temper by entering a state known as warrior's madness thor commits an unpardonable sin in asgardian society and willingly sacrifices his sanity for a tenfold increase in power yeah just okay. being a really sweet pretty sure that's from a non-canon like comic that picture they just used i could like i might be wrong what's up for a duck I'm pretty sure he fights and like kills Hulk in that. Okay, so are they gonna say? So I guess they're gonna say base Thor scales to Worldbreaker Hulk, who's 120 times universal, and he's 10 times that. Um, and I don't know if I missed it, but they didn't really calculate his speed unless they say he's a measurable speed, which I don't think Death Battle does. I think they just say he can travel back in time, um, and it's not like his speed. So they're just they just have him like an MFTL because he outraced that planet and he crossed that galaxy one time. That's cool. There's higher speed skills for Dragon Ball, um, both in just calcing stuff from the anime, um, and just him being in timeless voids and stuff like that. Um, so I want to see where they skill Vegeta, but at least from this, um, you can get higher levels of times times universal, which is not really an accurate way to scale characters you should do by dimensional tiers um but times universal you can get vegeta way higher just from base super saiyan forms alone i think um so if you just say like super saiyan 3 is 400 and then god is above that and super saiyan blue is 50 times that that's already oh my god i can't but i believe that's already like uh what's that yeah that's already twenty thousand times i believe um editor me is gonna kick me in the head if that's the wrong number but uh either way that's higher than they just skilled for um so let's see what they do here the god's capricious wrath because... oh and that was under the assumption that um base form becomes god and that form is just baseline universal even though they're statements for like even characters who are like kid boot level being universal you'll know it's just thor the god of thunder kicking ass and saving the day to the bloodthirsty warrior race known okay, as the Saiyans, and named for their mighty leader, King Vegeta. Noting the Saiyans' proficiency in genocide, the alien emperor King Cold and his son Frieza contracted them to be their personal hit squad, conquering worlds in their name. But when Frieza felt these monkeys were getting... Was dead. 
Okay. Okay, background. Background. Warriors in the universe. It helps that Planet Vegeta had a gravity ten times greater than that of Earth's, making his natural physiology significantly stronger and more. Gravity thing barely matters for scaling. Because it's also treated so different. Yeah, it's also treated like super, gravity and stuff is treated so differently in different verses. Like um, for like One Punch Man, for example, I'm working on a uh, One Punch Man scaling video. Uh, like 200 times gravity in One Punch Man. Is pretty much considered like fodder um while in other verses i mean like early dragon ball even though char the characters in at dragon ball in dragon ball at that point are stronger than the one punch man equivalents uh who tank these gravity things um it's it's treated as more impressive so it, it's not really a good way to scale characters even though they i think they used a gravity feat for thor already really weird hope they don't use that as like a way to scale them to each other has a physical energy to make him even stronger, faster, and tougher than that. That's true. Shoot it at your opponent to blow him to kingdom come. That is true. That's right. Vegeta can point and click a planet out of existence with his soul. Man, that's yeah. hardcore. He can use ki to fly at faster than light speeds, slice you to pieces that's with true. an energy blade, and even mm -hmm. hold you in place with energy ring. So, let's be real. Vegeta's favorite do it. Okay. Okay. Like the key map, okay. however, struggle. Their power increases exponentially. That's, That's true. I so assume they're talking about Zenkai. Saiyan's infinite evolutionary potential. So it's no wonder Vegeta eventually toppled the alien tyrant with the help of another surviving Saiyan, Kakarot. And with Frieza's defeat at the hands of this Earthbound Super Saiyan. Fired. And a super super increasing. Ever having okay, he gets stronger, he gets stronger. He reaches God, trains with Whis. Okay. Okay, so they are using the manga, all right. But most he does do that in character. He can go even further beyond and become a Super Saiyan God. A Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, and a Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Evolved. Oh, what was that little tidbit they put? Moving Super Saiyan God form Saiyan can partially tap into their power without fully transforming, allowing them to boost their base to form to similar heights. Okay, they're using base as God. And a Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Evolved. His power got completely insane. The dude was strong enough to destroy the room of spirit and time. Okay, not relevant. Not relevant. Not relevant. <laughs> uh, not relevant. Uh, not relevant. Um, relevant. Not relevant. <laughs> An entirely separate dimension just by powering up. When Goku fought Beerus... He... Oh, wait, did they just say the time chamber feat? That's not really impressive. I mean, that just puts him over, but over like, Gotenks in base, which we already knew. Um... Because that, that mentions the size of a planet. He nearly destroyed the universe. And that was the very first time he ever went Super Saiyan God. That is true. We yeah. measured Dragon Ball's universe 7 to be up to 13 times bigger than our own. Sure. Need to be punching I don't think I don't think that's true. I don't I don't really don't I don't really think that's true. If you're treating the entire like everything that we see within Universe 7, um I don't think it's like 13x universes. I don't think that model is supposed to be taken like literally to scale but it is bigger than one universe like one observable universe um now there are things that you can use to say that the universe is like infinite size uh that's fine um but i don't remember what they exactly say for the 13 times universe scale um but i believe it's using literally the model and like taking like the circumference of it or whatever i don't really think that's valid um but like dimensions like hell and heaven are universe sized realms on their own um and if you want to, again if you want to say those are all infinite sized realms um that's when scaling gets a little bit crazy um at least dimensional tier wise um but if you want to just say x universal it's an this is an old meta it's not really relevant uh, again because you can have you can destroy nine billion finite size universes and someone can destroy one infinite size universe and be stronger than you like it <laughs> that's how it works <laughs> Vegeta can tap into the same monstrous energy Beerus has. Oh, okay, yeah, so they definitely are combining, because the god, key, and base thing is a lot more shaky in the manga. There's only real, to my memory, there's only two implications that it happened, or like, like Super Saiyan God and base, I should say. There's only two implications that it happens. Uh, one time where Goku's training with Whis, um, in base, he punches at Whis, and you see, like, the outline of the god form. Again, it's never stated verbatim. If you want to say, like, that's what, they're just quickly explaining that that's what happened, go for it. 
Um, and then the other one is um, during the Moro arc, um, while Dende is healing Goku, he's like, I forget the exact wording that he says, but he essentially implies that Goku's key level in base is at the level of the gods or something like that. Um, if you want to say that means he has god key in base and that his base form is Super Saiyan God, go for it. It's not a 100% argument, but I guess... So they're they're just going to take anime strength scaling and then just use the hacks and power stuff from the later manga arcs after the Torment Power. That's fine. It's not correct, but it's fine. And when he does, he can perform Hakai and erase your ass from existence entirely. That's true. You physically, spiritually, yep. and even temporally, as it had wiped you from time itself. Such is the might of a god of destruction. For when Vegeta wants to go one step beyond beyond he seizes that very power he becomes a warrior fueled only by lust for battle he becomes it's a little weird they're about to explain ultra ego but it's always weird doing scaling a character especially what right when they're in the middle of an arc right like granola arc might now be wrapping up we have to see where the next few chapters come out when i'm making this video but to to start scaling a character in like their capabilities before they've even like it's like the first day of using the form it's a little bit weird um especially like if you had just if you if like for, again example is like if you had made a video about how strong the new like ultra instinct goku during the tournament of power was right after using ultra instinct sign you would not have had all the information um necessary to scale him properly uh, especially to characters later on because as it turns out that form actually by the end of the tournament of power kind of sucks um so and we don't know and we didn't know what it really meant and everything it could do so weird to do but i see why they're doing it all right so they didn't do any more scaling okay so they're just saying vegeta exponentially beyond it's 13 times universal um, hopefully they do the Super Saiyan multipliers over base and they get a higher number than what they got for Thor. Um, they didn't super scale speed for either of them. I think that's on purpose. Um, just saying one character blitzes is not an entertaining way to do a battle. Um, even I will admit that. Um, and it's sometimes hard doing crossfires for that very reason. Um, still, I won't be surprised if they say the god blast kills vegeta or something because he tries to absorb it uh and it just like overclocks him or something um or they just say vegeta's more x universal than thor is um let's see um i'm gonna skip the battle here um i don't want to just make content of just me watching the battle i don't think that really helps anybody all right uh welcome back um so i was correct that thor won um let's see why they uh justify why <laughs> The God of Thunder had him outmatched in several key areas. Let's see. Off, the big one, who was stronger. Despite being up against the God of Strength, Vegeta actually matched up pretty closely with Thor. Both could output power far in excess of destroying a single universe. It's always tough to get an exact number for Dragon Ball Super's most powerful character. That's true. But we can combine the size of Universe 7 with multipliers from Vegeta's transformations to get a rough estimate. It's important to note that Ultra Ego's power boost has never been stated. But we do know that Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta were roughly even in power. When Goku applied a Kaioken times 20 boost to fight Jiren, Vegeta kept up after going Blue Evolve implying that both increases in power are roughly the same increase. Similarly, Blue Vegeta matched base Top, and needed Blue Evolve to keep up with Top's God of Destruction form, which is extremely similar to Ultra Ego in theme and purpose. Given this... This is, this is not true. <laughs> uh, they're stronger than Broly. Don't, uh... They're stronger than Broly. I've already, I've actually gone over this um, in my previous videos. Um, both in my Vegito video, um, and in my, yeah, just my Vegito video, um, in the manga, they're stronger than Broly, and they're talking about Ultra Ego, so that's what they're talking about. In the anime, they're not, but 
the best current example of a measurable form akin to Ultra Ego, we can assume that Ultra Ego's boost in power, at least initially, could be extremely similar in terms of a percentage increase, making Ultra Ego's original state about 20 times more powerful than Blue Evolve. With that in mind, Vegeta at his peak could destroy a universe roughly 260,000 times over. And Thor was pretty close to that. Taking a look at the Marvel Universe's size, which has a radius of at least... Oh, okay, so I don't know why they... See, yeah, they waited to share this. Um, Yeah, so if the Marvel Universe is just like infinitely bigger and he's way stronger, sure. At least a trillion light years has... Oh. Um, for feats like this, yeah, Look, hold on. At the Marvel Universe's size, which... Okay, yeah, who survived the closure of two universes at the same time. Um, so, when... <laughs> this is a weird concept to explain, but when when you tank an explosion or collision of two things, you're not taking in all of the kinetic energy that those things are outputting, right? Like, here's, like all the energy within the explosion is like 10, right? But let's say only 10% of it is hitting your body. You're only taking that 1%, that 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 one of the ex, one of energy of the explosion. Like it's that so tanking two universes colliding it does not make you two times universal. Um that's not that's not how energy works. That's not that's not how scaling works, right? Um that's kind of a that's kind of a weird feat. Now I know that's very edgy debater, man, and you can say like that's just the implication of what happened there, but that's <laughs> that's not a, a good way to scale characters. Which has a radius of at least a trillion light. Now, one more point: if a character outputs that much energy from their body and then causes an explosion that large, then they actually should be that durable because their body could withstand the force that was being output from their body in order to cause that explosion, especially when it's like for just like energy because uh, like in Dragon Ball, right? So like when a character blows up a planet, they should also be able to tank that explosion. I know there's stuff in like with Kid Buu not being able to tank like the planetary explosions that he himself caused in the anime, I think, but Kid Buu purposely lowers his durability. Um, and we actually see cases in Dragon Ball when characters output more energy than they can tank. Like when Goku fights Samasu, he actually breaks his arms because his Kamehameha is higher than his own durability. Um, so yeah. Eight years, as well as scaling to the World Breaker Hulk, Thor ended up only about 10 times stronger. Not terribly different, and it's definitely possible Vegeta's power could increase during the fight. Ten, ten times stronger. Um, yeah, I mean... I don't know why that would be treated as like a close thing. That that's like a one shot difference. <laughs> that's funny. Um, wait. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. And Vegeta at his peak. <sighs> okay. Now this is weird. I don't know why they're treating God Vegeta as the one who can destroy the Dragon Ball universe. They already acknowledge that God, like that, there's God form levels of power and base, right? Mm -hmm. And if you think base Vegeta somehow didn't get any stronger over the entirety of Super, which is absolutely not the case, then why would they? Why would you do this? Unless you were trying to make Thor win, right? Because if this is base Vegeta here, right? And before he gets this 50 times, he gets more than a 400 times amp. He's suddenly way stronger than Thor. Um... So just, it's interesting to look, I didn't even notice this at first. So look out for these things when you're scaling characters like this, um, or when people are scaling characters from this. Everybody does it, to be fair. Everybody kind of like skims over something or slightly tweaks information uh, to kind of make the battle work the cleanest. Um, because if you give Vegeta any other like correct benefits of the doubt, then the, the stomp in Vegeta's favor becomes way higher. Um, again, this is functioning by Death Battle's own internal logic here. Let's see um, what they what other reasons besides AP. Not terribly different, and it's definitely possible Vegeta's power could increase during the fight to match him. But even if he was stronger, it wasn't the only thing that mattered. Ultra Ego's damage absorption could only do so much against an opponent like Thor. That's true. Vegeta may have trained as a warrior from birth, but Thor has been fighting for millennia against a much wider variety of 
exposed. Allowing experience barely matters in a fight unless it's unless it's a fight between like normal human level street level characters skill and experience like barely matters unless you can justify like why knowing unless you can know a character can know the exact specific hacks ability of another character because it happens to have like a one-to-one -one correlation but even then most explanations would just be oh he just doesn't get hit by it because like who in character would him to adapt to Vegeta fairly easily. And the fact that Thor was way faster gave him a lot of leeway to use that extra combat experience. Applying Vegeta's transformation multipliers to the shockwaves from Goku and Beerus' punches, Vegeta should be able to fight at nearly 300 quintillion times the speed of light. But okay. scaling to Ares moving within plague time? Thor would be over 70 quadrillion times faster. More than okay, so... This is... I, I don't understand. I don't know where this where this scale is coming from, right? Because technically we're all moving like in Planck time, right? And the question is distance over time, right? Like how far are these characters moving? It's really impossible to quantify, right? And I understand that they're fighting here. I don't have the context for this feat, right? But just saying that something happened within a period of time is not enough to like scale a character, right? Um... I understand what they're. I understand what it, they're getting at here, and that's fine. But weird. Fast enough to avoid Vegeta's key attacks, and even more importantly, absorb all of them with Mjolnir. This alone could shut down all of Vegeta's ranged attacks. Sure, Veggie could absorb it back with Spirit Vision, but he'd have to hit Thor first. And with that much of a speed difference, that's easier said than done. And since Thor can just will the energy out of somebody he could just take it right back. will the radiation out of somebody i don't know that's that's such a weird jump in logic and then some even without absorption vegeta's key reserves are not infinite and many of his battles have ended with him at low energy he was exhausted by the end of the tournament of power which lasted about one hour in total meanwhile thor fought an army for over a month straight theoretically like i said this was what i was talking about however Stamina feats are also, I didn't want to bring this up before, but stamina feats are really weird in fiction, right? Because what's going to drain more stamina? Fighting a bunch of fodder minions who don't skill you? Or fighting dudes who are stronger than you or equal to you? Which one's going to make you more tired? <laughs> Which one's going to make you try harder? <laughs> Vegeta could have ended the fight immediately with Hakai, if not for the fact that Thor has resisted existence erasure before, including physically, spiritually, and temporally. Meanwhile, Vegeta had no way to match the God Blast, which could have killed friggin' Galactus, and that guy has threatened the- Oh, okay, that was a really weird jump in equivalence. I don't know how something aging you and something erasing you from time are the same thing, uh, and having your soul eaten and erased, because erasure is more than just removal. Whatever. Infinite multiverse with destruction just as a side effect of his battle. That's a level of power beyond anything we've seen in Dragon Ball. What was that for Well, Vegeta had no way to match the God Blast, which could have killed friggin' Galactus. And that guy has threatened the infinite multiverse with destruction just as a side effect of his battle. Okay, so again, <laughs> Death Battle loves to do this. Skim over the actual highest scaling of the character. Don't say it. Act it's actually their relevant scaling, even though that would be the most relevant skill for Thor here. I get that the God Blast does not scale to him normally, but like, if you th if you think Thor scales to an infinite multiversal character, why have this fight at all? But yeah, uh, tell me what you think. Do you think uh, Death Battle was uh, correct in this one? Do you think they were wrong? Uh, let me know. Uh, see ya.